half-wave dipole antenna consists of a linear conductive element, usually formed of a thin wire, having a total length, L, equal to lambda over 2 at the target frequency of operation. This antenna is typically fed by means of a voltage signal applied across a gap, which is introduced halfway along its length. You'll note that this gap splits the antenna into two poles. And at the ends of these two poles, as we'll see in a moment, we end up having alternating opposite electrical charges. So when the upper end is positively charged, the bottom end is negatively charged. And then 180 degrees later in the cycle, the bottom end is positively charged and the upper end is negatively charged. This is where this antenna gets the name dipole, meaning two poles. It's from the two electrical charge concentrations existing at either end of the conductor. We will base our discussion of the half-wave dipole on the diagram shown here, where the length of the dipole is oriented along the z-axis and centered on the xy plane, so that half the antenna is above the xy plane and half the antenna is below. The half-wave dipole antenna is typically considered a narrowband antenna. However, increasing the radius of the antenna is an effective means of increasing the bandwidth of the operation. You must keep in mind, though, that this comes with two significant trade-offs. The first, and the more significant of the two, is that the larger the radius is, the more difficult it is to efficiently feed the antenna and achieve a smooth and even transition of current from your feed line onto the body of the antenna. A secondary trade-off is that the larger the radius of the antenna is, the more strongly the antenna is affected by fringing fields. Now, what are fringing fields? So it turns out, because of the abrupt truncation of the current path at either end of the dipole, you end up getting very high charge concentration at those points because the current flows into that point for half the cycle but has no path by which to flow out until the cycle goes back the other way. This high charge concentration leads to high density fields and high amounts of reactive energy storage in the region surrounding the antenna ends, as seen here. These are known as fringing fields, and from the perspective of the current, they make the antenna appear slightly longer than its actual physical length. So the effective length of the antenna is greater than the true length of the antenna. This apparent increase in length corresponds to an increase in the inductance of the antenna and thereby to a reduction in the frequency at which the antenna resonates. So a typical design path for a dipole antenna begins by designing and simulating the antenna with a half-wave length, but this will result in resonance below the target frequency of operation. So the next step is to optimize your antenna in simulation by slightly shortening its physical length. The purpose here is to make the effective length equal to half wavelength, which will shift your resonant frequency back to your target design frequency. The current structure that forms on a half wave dipole driven by a sinusoidal source is approximately sinusoidal. When the antenna is driven at exactly the half wave frequency, the current magnitude forms a standing half sinusoid along the length of the dipole, with nulls at either end of the dipole and a maximum at the center. So here's an animation of the current density on the surface of a dipole over several cycles. And here is a corresponding animation of the current vectors on the surface of the dipole. So you can see that the current direction is alternating upward and downward. So you can see that the current is zero of necessity at the ends of the dipole. Remember that this corresponds to high charge buildup at those current nulls. And you see a current maximum in the center of the dipole. This is a sinusoidal distribution. So we can also view it in graphical form like this. This is the current magnitude graphed from negative L over 2, the bottom end of the dipole, to L over 2, the upper end of the dipole. 